Designers, here are a bunch of useful tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I first started out in Adobe Illustrator that will save you hours of time. Let's do it. This one will blow your mind. We all know the Pathfinder tool here, it's great. If I wanted to delete this shape from the blue shape behind it, like so, we would do this and it would create this awful shape. But when we do that, we can't really edit it afterwards. It's gone. Well, did you know if you wanted to delete this shape from this shape using the Pathfinder option, if you hold down Option or Option, Alt and press minus anchor point, it will do the exact same thing. However, now it is completely editable. So it has minused it, but it is also completely editable. So no more to these fully destructive designs that we do. We can edit this. Once you're done, you can go ahead and press expand and it's expanded. Brilliant. Let's say you have a logo like this but you need to get rid of this anchor point here. Whenever you go to the minus anchor point tool and delete it, it will just distort the path. But if we hold shift and delete it, it will try and keep that path in its own form. If I do it with a circle and I press the minus anchor point tool, you'll notice it just cuts half the circle off. But if I hold shift, it will try its best to retain the shape whilst moving the handles. I've got a lovely poster here of a castle, but if I want to find a complementary color for the cloud, I'll find the color of the cloud itself, which is this nice blue. I'm going to duplicate this, go to the color picker, and I'm going to check the hue saturation. If the hue is above 150, take 150 away. If it is below 150, add 150. So 197, I'm going to go to a calculator. 197, take away 150, that equals 47. So I'm going to write 47 back in and it will give us a really nice complementary color for that blue or that specific color at the start. You've heard of the golden ratio, but you don't know how to create it. It is simple. Create a square holding shift perfect square. We're going to duplicate the square by pressing Command C and Command F to paste in front. Go up to your height tool here and press asterisk, which is times 1.618 and press enter. You'll notice that it creates this cool square that is just 1.618 times bigger. Now we're going to do this again by moving it to the right, press Command C, Command F times 1.618 and we've got another version there that we just attach using smart guides. We're going to do it again times 1.618 and you'll notice that we're creating a sort of size system here and we can keep doing this for eternity but this is essentially the golden ratio here now if you wanted to use the golden ratio in your work using like the shape builder tool all you need to do is go to your ellipse tool come here create a perfect circle in the square of each element here and you'll have the golden ratio inside these circles. So this follows the golden ratio exactly, but you need to make sure it lines up perfectly each time. So these are all in proportion to the golden ratio, but let's say you wanted to create the actual arc in the golden ratio. Well, go to your arc tool here, and from the left to the right, you don't have to hold shift, but you can if you like, just go ahead and bring that arc up till it touches. When we go to the second one, you'll notice the arc is on the other way around. So press F to flip and just repeat the process. Keep pressing F. And you'll notice that we're creating the spiral for the golden ratio. And if you do this long enough, then you will have the golden ratio. If you're spending time creating a harmonious type system, then here's an easy way of creating the correct sizes. Find your body text. So I'm going to say this is our body text. We like it. It's 12 points new has. So now I want to find my subtitle. So I'm going to type subtitle and here I'm going to go again up to the height. We're going to times that 1.618. We have our subtitle. We're going to do it again. Copy this. We're going to go to H2, highlight that, times it by 1.618. But this time we're going to skip a weight. We're going to go to medium. We're going to do it again. H1 times this by 1.618. Skip another weight. Copy it again. 1.618. And then this one will be title. And again, you can skip it to a different weight as well. And now you have a harmonious type system using golden proportions, which is based on the most readable text, which is always the body text. So always start with the body text. This next trick is a doozy. Is that a word? You have a logo like this generic one here. The problem that we have with this is that it kind of looks like it's boning. By that, there's something called the boning effect. When we take a shape, 
like this and we have a circle around it or a circular end so we have this pill shape we notice that the curve comes down and then it gets very straight here we get these little points right here where it looks really strange it kind of feels like it's a bit too abrupt this is only amplified when we scale out and we see it when it's at a small scale we can see that it's very straight and then very curved this gives it what's known as the boning effect where it looks like it's pressing in on itself to mitigate that we need to change this slightly what we can do is add an anchor point up here and up here i'm going to move these two anchor points further down then i'm going to increase the handle size of these two points further up then what i'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of half of this shape because we do not need it anymore i'm going to copy this and paste it downward and i'm going to press the pathfinder and now we have a lot more of a natural shape going on there it looks so much cleaner and nicer see that it looks more like a pill i've got a side-by-side -side comparison of how this could look in your logo designs but it also works in typography too this side has the burning effect but this side here doesn't if you notice this very carefully when i zoom out it looks a lot nicer this side than this one it looks a lot more natural as well typography is a complete illusion and so is a lot of the shapes that we do use in logo design if you're working in print you're probably using the wrong color of black this looks black doesn't it well the problem is it isn't actually black you may be seeing it as black so we need to go to preferences so press command comma or go to preferences go down to appearance of black and you'll see there's an example of 100k black and an example of rich black you need to go ahead and turn on display all blacks accurately and output all blacks accurately you do not want all output all blacks as rich black because that gives you a bad representation of what you're going to be printing the difference that rich black has is that it's a lot nicer you see here in the actual color picker it isn't correct there's a hundred percent key the way that printing works is we have cmyk which means cyan magenta yellow and key key isn't black it's kind of like this gray blue very dark color to get black what we need to do is move this down a bit more now there's a lot of ways to create rich black but for me because i'm a commoner i just bring my whole thing down in the color picker and change it like so this is the difference between normal 100k black but this is true rich black so that is how you make true rich black so you've got some type but you want to edit it well it might be a bit difficult you might have to use like different shapes well all we're going to do is press command shift and o or just outline the text so it's no longer editable and what we're going to do is select our type or the words that have been outlined we're going to press n to go to our pencil tool and what we can do now is if we zoom in a little bit more we can edit this type pretty easily we can create some cool flourishes in our type and it's so simple to do and i'm doing a really bad job of it here but we're able to edit this like no one's business if i can actually do it nicely i'm sure you guys would do a lot better job than me and the great thing about it is it will replace what you've just done as well with the shape and you can do this as much as you like and it completely edits the text once you're done with it you can simplify it by pressing right click and simplify and it will simplify that selection down so you get less anchor points going along all the time we've all seen these little corner rounding buttons however did you know you can change them by pressing option and when you press option and click you'll notice that the cursor changes to a different option so let's say i wanted this and this to be chamfered in i can do that but if i don't want them chamfered in i could make them like so or curved that doesn't look too bad i should have done that now, if you wanted to learn the art of bespoke logo type design, the methods that we use to create professional word marks, then I made a course called Logo Launch, which is available for you down below in the description. There are so many lessons. We teach you everything from how to create the word mark all the way to the business of selling your actual designs and becoming a graphic designer that one won't be replaced as quickly as everyone else, probably. That was a joke. <laughs> But also it shows you how you can make more money doing what you love to do by learning logo type design and the fundamentals of it. So click the link down below to learn more about Logo Launch. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it and subscribe. I always make these videos every week. So come back for more. Go and binge watch if you like. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.